Welcome to the Driveway Beers Podcast with Mike and Alex. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you enjoy the show. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share on any platform that you're listening on. All right, welcome back to another show. Thank you for coming back, as always. Um, if you're listening to us on a podcast platform like Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Deezer, Pandora, Odyssey, wherever you get your podcast, then you're listening to us on it. If you could, please pause this right now and rate this show. I don't care if you rate us one star, five stars, three stars. Prefer that you would do five stars if you like the show because you're here so often. Uh, and and give us a, a rating on Apple Podcasts or any podcast platform. It'll help us get seen by other people. If you're on YouTube or Rumble, go ahead and click that thumbs up. Or subscribe for us if you like seeing what we bring to you. That is the best way for you to say thank you for all the free content that we're providing. We also want to thank Brian Schilling with Long & Foster Fine Homes in Annapolis, Maryland, 145 Main Street in Annapolis, 21401. His phone number is 410-263-3400 and ask for Brian. I've said this before, Brian was my realtor. When I bought this home over 10 years ago, um, just great service, great negotiator for us uh, when we were buying the home, was able to get us in the home before it even went in the market. And in this market right now, that's probably the best thing that he can do for you is get you into these homes before they even get on the market or at least the day of, right? Because right now, homes are hot. Even though interest rates are high, home prices are still going up. Um, So if you are in the market to buy a house, call Brian. If you're in the market to sell your home, call him as well as he will get you the best deal on your house. We also want to thank Cheers and Spirits and the Arnold Station Plaza. Um, over on Ritchie Highway in Arnold, Maryland. We are drinking Old Scout Straight Bourbon Whiskey tonight. Um, this is probably the highest proof whiskey I've probably had tonight. <laughs> it's a little spicy. <clears throat> um, I haven't actually put lips to it yet because I am letting this thing mellow out because it's going to be fire down my throat. <laughs> uh, 58.9, 58.9% uh, alcohol by volume. It is aged five years. Um, it's distilled in Indiana of all places. I, I guess they do bourbon everywhere or yeah. whiskey. Um, it does say smooth AM. I don't know what that smooth is. ambler ambler smooth. And what does that mean? It's like a horse. Oh, all right then. Uh, there's um, a horse on the label. Yeah. So this, uh, so proof wise, this is, this has gotta be what? one twenty seventeen point eight one seventeen point eight. So this is probably the highest proof stuff we've tried on this show. Yeah. And we all know how I do with high proof, right? Right. So th- this will be fun. When I t- I'll take I'll let everyone know when I, when I take the sip. I'm letting this gonna, I'm going to let this mellow out a bit though. Yeah, cuz like four roses is 40. Um <coughs> ragged branch is 45 and then I can't see the bib over there. The bib and tucker? Yeah. Let me check. Uh, 46, so 92 proof. So this is actually quite low. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to lie. Out, out of the the ones we got on this table here between Ragged Ranch, Four Roses, and Bim and Tucker, I'm not a big fan of the Ragged Ranch. That was kind of a, uh, a store suggestion from a different store. That was definitely not from Cheers and Spirits. It was from a different store in the area. Um, they, the guy sold me a story about how, like, it was, like, a distiller that learned under the Weller brand, which is like a really big brand in whiskey mm. from the uh, Buffalo Trace Distillery, I believe. It's an al- Weller's an allocated item, costs a butt ton of money. Okay. Which we, we have never gotten into like the whole how much whiskey costs bullshit. Yeah. Uh, in Virginia, it's a shit show because in, in, in Virginia, they have state run stores. Mm-hmm. And the state run stores try to allocate it and they do lotteries and bullshit. Uh, in Maryland, it's a free for all, which has its different issues. But um, a lot of the lower stuff, and when I say lower, I mean like lower priced, right? So like regular Buffalo Trace in Virginia is allocated. Mm-hmm. Like they actually hold it. It's a thirty dollar bottle, and they're like protecting it like it's like the gut nectar of gods, right? <laughs> Meanwhile, you can go down to the DC Costco and pick it up, mm-hmm. right? Which I still have yet to do. No. I haven't either, and we should make a field trip. We do need we do need to take a field trip. I know exactly where it is. Yes, 
It's and it's actually, you know, I think it's that's in northeast. You can't miss it. No, it's, like if you're on fifty, it slaps you in the face like that Mormon temple on four ninety five. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right there, and you'd be like, oh, that's northeast. That's a rough. Area. Twenty years ago, it was rough, but yeah. now it's like. Nice. <laughs> so it's literally right off fifty. Yeah. I mean, you're not going into northeast. You're just going off the exit and taking a right. Yeah. It's right there. Yeah. Um, I've been wanting to take that field trip for a while because there are some Kirkland Signature branded whiskeys mm-hmm. that apparently are fairly decent, and they're really low priced. Like it's Costco priced. Like nice. it, it's not. Then you have to buy like six gallons of it. No. <laughs> no. No. Well, uh, you're buying the liter. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're, you're buying the jug handle, right. but you're not buying a tub of it. Right. You know? Um, but I've heard it's pretty good. And I've heard, I think it's made by the Buffalo Trace Distillery, but I could be way off. It's either Buffalo Trace or Heaven Hill. Hmm. One of those distilleries. Um, and the only reason why I know any of those names is because I watched that show on YouTube. From, the Juice. It's called uh, Bourbon Junkies. Oh, okay. It's just, it's literally two dudes like us. Mm-hmm. Except they know what they're talking about. Except that, yeah. Except they know how to talk about whiskey. <laughs> they they started their own distillery, hmm. sort of, where they sourced the whiskey. So basically, they bought barrels of whiskey and like mixed them a little bit to make yeah. their own like branded whiskey, so they can bottle it and they can sell it as their own. Uh, but they're not they're not distilling it themselves yet, right? Uh, and they're up in Michigan. So Ryan from Michigan, if you're hearing me, uh, look for I believe it's uh, Virtue spirits um but check out the channel bourbon junkies i want they're entertaining guys mm-hmm. it's literally like you and me mm-hmm. if we just did a bourbon show okay and tasted bourbons like it did a 25 minute taste we're gonna taste some bourbons and give them grades and shit. yeah it's a neat show though do they call it the juice i can't stand it i don't think so so they're- like i'm real into like so since i got the blackstone i got really into blackstone stuff yeah and rather than saying the meal they uh, so there's if you look at all the Blackstone things, everyone puts their beer on the Blackstone and takes a picture of whatever they're cooking, mm-hmm. right? So if you're making cheesesteaks, it'll be like a bottle of, or a can of Pacifico and then the food they're cooking. And it's like a thing and it's dumb. And then rather than saying the meal, they call it, and it grates my nerves and just say it, I'm going to throw up a little bit in my mouth. They call it the cook. It's like, oh, that's, yeah, that's a good cook. What? No. No, oh, no. The cook is the person that makes the meal. <laughs> it's not the, the meal. Cook. Get the cook. The cook guys and the juice guys are probably <laughs> going in circle jerking each other. F all those guys. So I can't stand that shit. No. It's like everything has to have its own. And I'm sure there's Jeep guys hanging out with them too. Because it involved the circle jerk. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. What could, the, let's see they, how many people we can piss off. <laughs> they're, ha- they're having the cook on the ride. With the juice. Right. Like, sh- shut the fuck up. And the jerk. Yeah, right. <laughs> They've blown each other in, in the back. I love your ride. I love your cook, no, man. I love your cock. I'll be your cook. Gl- 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 <laughs> Jesus, choke on it. So, yeah, but, I mean, and if they say the juice, I'll try to, like, forgive them. They, they, I don't think they do. Yeah. I don't, like, I don't, it's not sticking out in my mind. Yeah, it's not like the one that I that I watched that one time and like the, they they were talking about dusty barrel and shit. Yeah, I'm sorry, you yeah. lost me at dusty barrel. Right, and then your nose was all the way in the cup. Oh, just just <laughs> getting in there, get friendly, <laughs> get to know each other. I've never been that deep in anything. As her nose was. <laughs> um, I'm gonna touch on a, a little bit of a touchy subject tonight. <laughs> Got to talk Mideast Mideas peace, or lack thereof. <laughs> oh. um, for me, the fact that there was unrest between Israel and Hamas is not surprising to me. No. The thing, that is, the thing that's surprising to me, and we, could, we can talk about the actual fighting, but the thing that's most surprising to me this time around is the, the protests and the, the people speaking out about it in the United States how many of them are now more pro Palestinians and pro Palestine of all things? Yeah. Rather than being pro Israel. And like, I, I think five years ago, we wouldn't have seen this much pro Palestinian stuff. No, especially. Yeah. I don't think we would have, especially pre Trump. I don't think you would have seen it. Yeah. And definitely the closer you got to nine 11, the less of it you would have seen. 
Right. Um, but I've been listening to a bunch because I have my podcast, you know, uh, library. Of, like I was listening to Jimmy Dore. Jimmy Dore is like all about, you know, all not I won't say anti-Israel, but just certainly not pro. Um, Dave Smith is you know pretty much anti-Israel as well, but and he's more because he's just anti-war. Um, but then if you get into like the Vet Bro podcasts, like. Andy Stump and and those guys, they're all like, you know, like Andy Stump, I'm listening to one right now, he's got two guys that were that were former IDF. Or one of them's still in, he's just waiting to get called up. So, because you can be a dual citizen and be a uh, in the Israel, in the IDF as a reservist and get called up and have to go. There are actually a bunch of people that flew uh, back to Israel to, you know, for their call up or to volunteer. Like, mm-hmm. hey, I'm here. So, you know, the 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 differences of opinion between the two, and I take a little from each. I can see, I can, I can always see both sides of the coin usually. But what I, uh, but I, what I don't get are the kid, the, like these college kids here. And there's always those lefty college kids, or those, those, you know, um, those people that are just going to be anti whatever. But they're really loud and vocal. And I always be like, okay, junior, sit down. You don't know what you're talking about, you know. Um, so like at GW, they're projecting all this stuff. On the Gelman Library, like they're Holocaust survivors, like they don't even think past. Oh, I'm, you know, I feel for these Palestinians, which I'm not going to say that I don't feel bad for innocent civilians getting blown up anywhere by their governments. However, um, to put that on the Gelman Library, which again it was donated by the money that came from Holocaust survivors, kind of like, all right, do you know? Do you know what you're talking about? Like, do you know what you're doing here? Right. Have you looked at the entire? totality of the circumstances of what you're doing right now and the answer of course to that is 100 percent no. no so they know what they've been told yeah and that's the thing it's not, there's not an original thought among them right they're just regurgitating what some dipshit professor told to them when msnbc tells them yeah right and i love how the retort is when you say what well, you're just re- regurgitating what msnbc says well you go to the fox news yeah. okay no i don't i don't <laughs> um the reason why so this is a very complicated topic there's two two different topics at hand here one you've got the the attack itself if you take it in isolation the hamas attack on the israeli uh music festival Mm -hmm. not one person should be like "Uh, i'm glad they did it screw the israelis yeah screw the jewish people hamas did what they needed to do what no. And that's out there. It's loud. Well, it's very loud. Yeah. It's very loud. It's justifying it. People are out there actually justifying the act. And their their whole thing is, well, no, we're justifying because they're doing what they have to do to be able to live. And that's completely false. Like, yeah, you don't have to kill civilians. To, now, if you want to go attack legitimate IDF military targets, okay. You know, yeah. I'll give that to you. But these are, people that are saying this don't understand the history of Israel. Mm-hmm. The way it was created was a little bit bullshit. Basically, because at the time, the Palestinian territory was controlled by the British. And the British people, or the, the British government essentially created the state of Israel mm-hmm. after World War II. Because, obviously, Jewish people didn't want to stay in Germany, right? survivors of the Holocaust didn't feel safe there completely under. So they created the new homeland probably did it in the worst possible place because it's such a holy land. Right. And they essentially try to create a, a two state solution at the time. Well, once, and this is a very rudimentary way of explaining this, but they essentially created Israel. And from the moment Israel was created, the Arab countries in the area fought to get them out. Right. And and the thing is, like, I think the British withdrew in September of 1948. Yeah. And, like, the, like, say the British left September 1st, September 2nd, the Arab world attacked Israel. Well, yeah. And, and, so, <laughs> and so at that time, it was war. Yeah. And Israel won. Mm-hmm. And there have been several wars that the Israelis have won handedly. Right. They won through the I mean, and they, <clears throat> they kept getting attacked and they kept winning. And when they won, they took a little bit more land. Mm-hmm. And then they took a little bit more land. 
And then, and, and then they kept, neg- and then when they negotiated peace, they negotiated new lines that were bigger than what were there before. Yeah. Basically, it wasn't, they didn't get to keep everything that they won in the war. They, but they got more than they had. Yeah. Right. And that was how the ceasefires were done. So it's not like it, 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 that, but it was war and it, two warring factions that knew they were at war. Mm-hmm. Right. And, from that, you end up with essentially two enclaves with the West Bank and Gaza. Mm-hmm. And Israel the entire time has said, look, the Palestinians can be part of the Jewish state. Mm-hmm. They can have Israeli citizenship. And, there are, and there, are, there are Palestinians that do. Correct. But you've also got these really militant factions backed by really powerful people. Mm-hmm. Um, essentially Iran backs another group called Hezbollah and they also back Hamas and you've also got the PLO and, right. and, then, and then there's the, one more, uh, Islamic Jihad. Right. And then, and the interesting thing is that the PLO, so Hamas was, so the, the PLO was, is the organization favored by the West. Mm-hmm. West Bank. Yeah. yeah. And it's favored by the Western. Oh, nations. you mean Western countries. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and the ones that the Israelis would rather deal with. Like Yasser Arafat, towards the end especially, was like, they were actually like, I think it was him and was it Ariel Sharon? Yeah. Were actually like, you know. Wasn't that the Camp David Accords? Yeah. And Basically. they were making, they were speaking with one another. Like they weren't, right. you know, it wasn't just the, uh, you know, no diplomatic relations. It was actually, they're getting somewhere. But in some, I'm sure some CIA freaking operative somewhere decided that the PLO wasn't get, was getting too powerful, so let's create ha- Hamas to knock him down a peg, which now that's blown up in their face because Hamas controls Gaza, PLO controls the West Bank, and Hamas is super militant and backed by Iran. But the thing is, all of these Arab nations that are involved there love to invoke the Palestinians when they want to go fight with the Israelis. However, when it comes time to actually helping the Palestinians, they give two shits about them. Right. The Egyptians wouldn't even let them in the border. Yeah. The, the Egyptians will not let, let them cross from Gaza because that's down, because at one point the Sinai Peninsula, it, the Israelis had taken that in one of the wars and just gave it back to them. And Wasn't that part of the peace process with yeah. Egypt? Because Egypt and Israel have a, one of the longest standing pieces in the Middle yep. East. And Egypt does not mess with that. Right. They they are not gonna they're not gonna sacrifice themselves f- and get rid of that peace accord because yeah. they can't win a war. Yep. With Israel and Israel could take back the Sinai Peninsula tomorrow if they really wanted to. Yeah. So, so Egypt isn't touching that. Yeah. And so a, a buddy of mine was deployed to the Sinai Peninsula in Egypt as it was a you know there was a American presence there, um, and. That's the Egyptian government's position, but when it comes to like the actual boots on the ground over there, like they sit there and watch known Hamas like bringing rockets and stuff into Gaza from from Israel, like they knew it was happening. Well, and there's a huge tunnel system underneath yeah. Gaza too that leads into Egypt. Yeah, so there there is access there, and that's how they can get weapons in. Um, and I, I guess my point w- with all of this was that. There has been a stu- two-state solution for the longest time. Mm-hmm. And the problem is you've got a group like Hamas and Islamic Jihad and Hezbollah, which is in Lebanon, but close enough, where their entire stated goal is to wipe Israel off the map. Meanwhile, Israel and other Ar- Arab countries would prefer to have the two-state solution but every time they go into these negotiations or, or they get serious, Hamas or Islamic Jihad or Hezbollah attack. Mm-hmm. And Israel says, unless you guarantee our safety, we can't guarantee a two-state solution. Yeah. So it's basically like, stop attacking us and you can have something of what you want. You're never going to get the whole thing back. Yeah. We're, we're, gonna, we're too powerful. At we're this not point. going anywhere. Right. They're too powerful at this yeah. point. And never mind the fact they got the biggest gun on earth protecting them, which is us. Yeah. And I think the people here are pissed off that we're protecting them. Well, they got to remember at the end of World War II, we were part of the process that created the Israel state. Mm-hmm. There's no shot. We're, 
we're going to not back them up, especially because of the Jewish population we have here in this country. Yeah. It, it's kind of like, like, I'm Armenian. There's the Armenian, there's the country of Armenia, and you've got the Armenian diaspora. Mm-hmm. Which is, for those that don't know, diaspora means basically it's an ethnic, uh, a group of ethnic people that have moved on to other parts of the world. There's a lot of Armenians in, uh, in Canada, in the United States, there's uh, there's still quite a few in Turkey, oddly mm-hmm. enough, uh, and quite a few in Russia, and there's some other places too. When something happens to Armenia, the diaspora speaks up, mm-hmm. or diaspora, however you pronounce it. Well, it's the same way when something happens with Israel, the Jewish diaspora, which is much bigger than the Armenian one, yeah, they speak up, and it's a very powerful group of people. Yeah. Because what people didn't realize that after the Holocaust, the Jewish people, not only in Israel, but when they did, they didn't just go to Israel. They went to other parts of the world. When they went to other parts of the world, they started businesses. They grew wealth, mm-hmm. and we all know wealth means power. Yeah, and some people see that see that talking point as a bad thing. Well, they, they like the talking point is well, Jews control everything. Okay, no, they don't. They control certain, they, they do control a large part of Hollywood. Mm-hmm. But they also help create Hollywood. Yeah. Like, it, you're, you, if you create, it's like if, if uh, when Steve Jobs created Apple, he got forced out and went back, right? He didn't give it up willingly. Right. You, you create an industry, you're going to control it yeah. as much as best you can. And it's not like they shut everyone out mm-hmm. because there's a lot of people in Hollywood making yeah. money. Um, but there's other, there's other industries in which they've made money, but they're using it against them now saying, well, they control this and now they can control the government. Like it's like a lot of, a lot of conjecture out there. Like, yeah, well, if this, ha- this is happening then this is happening and they control everything and they control the people that run this country. And that's why then they'll, they'll never, they'll always back Israel. Well, it's, and it's always been this, it is one of the, the, the tenets of anti-Semitism is that it's the, the underhanded they're in the, they're they're just under beneath the surface controlling things and pulling the levers and right. pushing the buttons holding everyone else down yeah that's their thing yeah they're t- they want all the money and they're holding everyone down yeah when they just they they were a very very determined people that made the, 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 after a very bad situation they basically put their heads down and went to work yeah and then created enough power within the group so that it wouldn't happen again. And nobody can blame, nobody can fault people for that. Like, especially because you're only literally about two generations away from that yeah. currently from people, from living human beings. You're one to two generations away from people that survived the Holocaust. Yeah. So it's not like this is a forgotten thing, right? This right. isn't from like the 200 BC. Bullshit. Yeah. Like our grand, so my grandparents, or grandfathers fought in World War II. Yep. Uh, one was in the Navy, and one was Eighth Air Force dropping bombs on the Third Reich. So, and then some of my friends growing up, they had grandparents that fought in World War II, and they also had grandparents that survived the Holocaust. So these are people that I like of the age of like, and some of like the the of my friends' grandparents that that I spoke to that ate dinner with, you know, uh, two yeah two generations removed from from that. Um, and I think, and that's part of the determination of the, of the people in Israel was like, that will never happen again. Correct. And, you know, they have a very, you know, formidable, formidable air force, which is interesting because right after the state of Israel was formed, um, a lot of the aircraft they were using were actually Messerschmitts and Falkers that they had, that were still operational. They would just take the German airplanes and remark them. And here we go. Now we have an air force, right? You know, so, um, just a, a an interesting like this was used to be used by the the regime that was murdering. Now you're using their equipment, which was even cooler. Like we're using this their stuff to protect ourselves. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's part of their determination. Is this will never happen again. So. Uh, and then then you got the other side of it, which is, well, Israel's just bombing indiscriminately and they're hurting babies and children and women. Okay. Nobody wants babies, women, and children to suffer in a war. Right. Nobody. On either side. I don't want innocent civilians 
hurt. Um, which is a recent thing, because during World War II, late in the war, 1945, um, the RAF and, and Army Air Corps firebombed Dresden to see what would happen. It was almost to see, they found an older city that was as close as to what they would get in Japan to compare it, mm-hmm. just to see what would happen. And they didn't care. We dropped, we dropped bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Didn't care. Yep. It was, hey, y'all fucked around, and you're going to find out. Yeah. So um, yeah, don't, don't be in disbelief when the powers that be have not a care in the world for human life. Yeah. They don't. Right. That also being said, it's, it's not like... I'm not going to say one side is completely innocent in any of this, because they're not. Innocents are getting killed on both sides. There is a there is a difference, though, in that... So Hamas uses public buildings to house their official business. Yeah. For example, they do have a headquarters in the in in a hospital. Now, I'm not saying that's the hospital that was bombed. Right, because it, it actually it was a it wasn't even bombed, but <laughs> Correct. So. Yeah. Well, but here's the thing though. There's a lot of people out there who still think Israel bombed that hospital. Right. And they didn't. And that's coming from a lot of um intelligence agencies, which Look, we can argue to we're in the face about intelligence agencies and how intelligent they really are. Mm-hmm. But even when you look at some videos of it, it's like that didn't come from far away. Yeah. <laughs> that came from like three miles away. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, hmm, the rocket you made out of a water pipe failed and landed short, really short. Yeah. In a hospital parking lot. That's what happened. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so the, 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 ballistic weapon that you invented in your driveway didn't work shocker so that's but you'll tell if you there's i still see people on facebook talking about the israelis bombing the hospital yeah and here's the thing if the israeli air force wanted gaza an idf they could make short work of it It'd be um, done, it would be done in a week yeah yeah so you know and there's a difference between hiding behind women and children there's a difference between actively killing them and collateral now the person that you might well, one could argue and argue well that well to the person that's dead in their family there's not much of a difference however there is a difference between three kids for uh, affected by the blast from an f-16 dropping a bomb and then someone actively going and executing you know innocent civilians yeah well and it's also you know if you were if you were on the hit list of an enemy because you shot up some people there and they went after you and the collateral damage was your wife and your kids. You have to take some personal responsibility and that you put them in harm's way because you didn't separate yourself from them. Yeah. And someone figured out where you were and they took their shot. And mm-hmm. unfortunately they took out some innocents. Yeah. And your family. Yeah. And that's not going to be a popular opinion. Right. But again, it, it goes back to, you know, you fucked around and unfortunately you and everyone around you found out. Yeah. You, you played a really bad, uh, a bad hand at cards and you just didn't think they would do it. Mm-hmm. Well, they did. Yeah. Because you fucked around yeah. and unfortunately your family found out. Yep. Now I'm not saying I think that the family deserves it. I'm not saying that. But if they were going after the militant, well then, hey, militant guy, if you wanted to save your family, you could have. Yeah. Send them away. Mm-hmm. Because you decided that you wanted to fight. When, yeah. That's, and that's the weird thing. Like, Hamas decided it was time to fight. And rather than separating themselves from the innocent civilians in, in, in Gaza, they hunkered down behind them. Yeah, they mixed in with them. Yeah. Knowing exactly what was going to happen. Yeah. You're not going to go kill 2,000 people at a, at a music festival and think nothing was coming from that. Yeah. So you knew something, you knew there was going to be retaliation and you hid behind women and children. Mm-hmm. 
Now, Israel should have seen that coming. Yeah, that's and that's kind of what I was what I because when you look at it, so when you see video of these people on these powered paraglider things flying in formation, first of all, they have to learn how to fly those damn things in the first place, and then flying in formation like that's hard Mm -hmm. to do. And they're in perfect, like, finger four. Like, if you watch two fighter elements, which would be a lead and a wingman and then a lead and a wingman, it's called finger four. And if you hold your hand, the lead element is your your pinky or your index and uh, middle finger, right? And then the secondary element is your ring finger and your pinky finger. And your fingernails would be where the jets are. That's how these motherfuckers are flying, right? Yeah. That You have to train to do that. And the fact that they were training to do this, and there are so many people involved, and it was over such a widespread area that did it, they just missed that? Like, it kind of, it's a head-scratcher. Well, I don't even mean missing that part, because we're going to get to that in a minute. I meant the PR move of Israel had to know the the retaliation strike was going to hit civilians. Yeah. And they did it anyway. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying they should have, they shouldn't have attacked those the 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 militants that were there right because of where they were and the innocents were in the same place Mm -hmm. what i'm saying is you had to know the backlash was coming from that strike yeah now that's also us assuming israel gives a two shits about the backlash because in the past they really don't yeah they they do the retaliation 10 times harder than what they got hit with and it's, it's supposed to be a deterrent so that the next attack doesn't come. And it always does, but it's, like after something like this, it's usually a while later. Yeah. They at least get a few years of peace out of it. Well, I think it's one of those things where you have to, you have to draw the balance between you want to get your, you want to get your revenge. You, you need to do your retaliatory strike or whatever, but do you want to, to do it to the point because dropping bombs on people's houses is a great way to radicalize people. Oh, yeah. I could be super chill, right? And I don't really care about, I don't know, let's throw some, like, L.A. Raiders fans. Well, L.A. Raiders fans all of a sudden have a big problem with the Ravens. This is hypothetical. Oh, I thought I thought this was real. No, no, no. Wait a minute. <laughs> so, rather than just, like, talking spec, they decide to start indiscriminately dropping bombs on houses in the, ball, when the Ravens fit, and they drop a bomb on my house. That's going to be a real big weight. Like, all of a sudden, now I'm going to be... Before, I didn't really give a shit about it. Well, now I'm radical, and I want to kill all of them. Right. So, that's kind of the... And that's a silly example, but that's kind of what... You might have somebody that really doesn't have a dog in the fight. Well, now he does, you know? Yeah. So, um, you kind of have to be careful when you're doing that. It feels good at the moment, but you got to have to think, okay, what's going to take place later on? Well, and we see that radicalization... And other things too is I mean we see it with social media too. You know, for you know, two white guys scrolling through Twitter or Facebook or whatever, and we and we happen to see a post about how uh, how groups hate white people. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, I saw it, whatever one day it's someone someone talking shit whatever. Scroll through, scroll through. Oh, there's another one. White people suck again. Mm-hmm. Scroll through, scroll through, scroll through. These people hate white people again. Well, fuck. They hate me. Yeah. Well, now I hate them. Right. Because they hate me. Yeah. Yeah. And meanwhile, all those posts are probably fake. Yeah. It's just to get you to hate them. Right. What is it? You take the red ants and the black ants, and you just leave them alone, and they'll live perfectly content, ignoring one another. Right. But take that ant farm and shake it up, and now they just fight each... They murder each other because, well... The red ants didn't shake up their entire world, which you know, when you do, you're shaking up their entire world. But that's who's there, right? <laughs> it wasn't right. us, right? So, and they're blaming you. You're blaming them. But fuck it, we're gonna fight. Yeah. Meanwhile, nobody did shit to either one, right? Now, there is a as, as far as like who's starting what to do what to who. Look, we it, you could, there could be a tit for tat on the entire thing. Mm-hmm. Of, well, they attacked them. They did this. They did that. Look, man, th- this war goes back further than me. It, 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 before I was born, before you were born. Well, no, I mean, you go back. It, go, it goes back before World War II. 
I mean, you got the Crusades and all this other shit, too. I mean, it even goes, and people say, oh, well, you know, the Palestinians were there first. The, you know, Palestine was there before Israel was. Well, there's this book called the, the Bible, and there's another book called um, the, uh, why can't I think of it? It's the first five books of the Bible that makes up the Jewish Torah. Torah thank yeah. you. Yep. Um, that clearly mentions Israel. And you can say, oh, well, that's just old wives' tales and, and fantasy and ex- explanations. For Okay, that's fine. However, it's still really, really, really fucking old. Mm-hmm. And it mentions Israel in it. <laughs> so right. King David, yep. you know, a long time ago. And King David existed. Whether he was spoken to by God and all this, you can believe one way or the other as far as you want. However, the dude was real. He was there and he was he was a Jew and he was in a country called Israel. Right. So it was there. Well, and I saw a post on one day, uh, and someone said, well, this is different because the other conquerors of Jerusalem and the Crusades and all this other, all these other wars and whatnot, the conquerors let the Palestinians be. They didn't try and force them out of the area. And I, I do believe there was some of that when Israel was created, but it was done by the British. Yeah. The Brit- And look, say what you want about the British now. Mm-hmm. Back then when it was British colonialism, and even when they gave the countries back to the people, they fucked up a lot of shit. Yeah. Especially well, with the drawing of borders. So, yeah, and, and that's the thing. All those countries in the Middle East... They're just arbitrary lines on a map, and they were they were drawn by the British, right? And they didn't take any consideration into the tribal, right, uh, or, or, or the 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 religious sects, the tribalism there. They didn't take any consideration in. Yes, yeah, so you've got you've got Sunnis and Shias, mm-hmm. which are the big. It's like Protestants and Catholics, right? Sunnis and Shias, they fight each other, but then you've got Palestinians, which I don't think are really either one of them. No, they don't consider. I don't think they consider themselves Arabs either. Yeah, and then you have. I could be wrong on that. This is not a factual podcast, by the way. Yeah, and, and then ev- you have everything we say is our own thoughts and not right. representing not anyone else, verified okay. by any sort of research at all. Yeah, no. Um, then you've got the Jews who were there, or the Israelites, whatever you want to call them, mm-hmm. and then you also have the Kurds. That's they're up in the northern part of Iraq, southern part of Turkey, uh, parts of Iran, Syria. So they're up there. Turks, uh, yeah, they're also there. Yep, Turkey. Armenians, <laughs> Armeni- Armenians were there. Actually, what a lot of people don't realize is that the Christian part of Jerusalem, uh, there's an Armenian church in Jerusalem, mm-hmm. one of the oldest there ever was. Yeah, uh, so that that's a little hidden gem for the people out there. And it's, you know, and Jerusalem is a holy city in Islam, Christianity, and and Judaism. It's it's revered for all in all three religions. Um. And my dad traveled there a lot, and he always had this idea. He said, look, let's solve this real quick with money. Have Disney, pre-woke Disney, sure. run Jerusalem with a triumvirate between someone from you know each of the major religions that find, that find the city so holy. The rest of the country is like, people think, oh, it's a desert. Dude, Israel's freaking awesome. Like, it's on the Mediterranean. There's palm trees. They grow bananas there. Make it a freaking resort. And when everyone's getting green, when everyone's getting that scrilla, they're all happy. Right. <laughs> so just make money off of it. And who's better at, uh, um, you know, turn that into a commodity but Disney? Sure. <laughs> Have them run it. So And and there's actually, there there is um, a very good example of a city being run as a holy city. And that's the Vatican. Mm-hmm. So Vatican City is actually run by the Catholic Church. Yeah, um, it's, it's it's a country. It it, it is its own yeah. country. I believe uh, the guard is Swiss. Yeah, the Swiss guard. Yep. Um, and they look goofy, but they're pretty badass. Yeah. Now don't get me wrong. I'm not saying the Catholic Church is awesome. Yeah. That ain't I, look. They I got, am Catholic. And I'm not they, saying it's awesome. They, so. they got their own shit. Yeah. They're they're a lot of hidden shit going on there. Administratively, I, they're pretty good. Sure. I, I look. They're flush with cash. They're good business people. Apparently, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but maybe you turn Jerusalem into, and along similar lines to what you said. I mean, Disney's a far fetched thing, but yeah. but you basically turn it into an incorporated city 
that's open to anybody. Yeah. It's it, there's no politics in it whatsoever. It's basically run to be open. Yeah. For all the religious and, and whatever, you know, like look, no religion has a claim to that city because all the religions are there. Yeah. So why not let the city of Jerusalem be its own entity? Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying let it be run by the United Nations or anything, but basically run by a central body of something. Yeah. So everybody, or, or even make it like a council of religions. Yeah. So like there's a Christian seat on the board, a Muslim seat on the board, uh, and a Jewish seat on the board. Yeah. And those, that triumvirate makes all the major decisions. Sounds like a joke. It a does. priest, a rabbi, an imam walk into a bar. Correct. <laughs> what do they, they form? An open city called Jerusalem. Right. But, <laughs> but you know what? If the whole entire goal is to make it a safe city that's open to everybody, mm -hmm. I don't. Who has a problem with that now? Yeah. Right. The well, it, I think Jeru I think Israel is so set on Jerusalem being the capital. I think if that were to be the solution. Where okay, we need a two state solution, but you got to give them, you got to give Palestinians a nice chunk of land. You can't yeah. do the split shit. Mm -hmm. Give them some good land. Yeah, and I get it. You developed it. You, it was nothing when you got there. You developed it into what it is. I get it, but you got to give something up if you want your peace and safety. Give some good parts of it up. Mm -hmm. A continuous piece of land, right? Yeah. Give up Jerusalem being your capital. Let it be, but you're not giving it to anyone. You're giving it up Pre, to this entity. Pri prior to Trump. Yeah, because you're not giving it to the, because Jerusalem, if I'm not mistaken, is in the West Bank. It's kind of like a they, they cut out. It's a weird carve yeah. out. Like it, it's, it looks like the West Bank kind of looks like a kidney around yeah. Jerusalem. I guess a few years ago, Israel took over all of it. Yeah. I, I don't know. It, it, it's always, it's been in flux for hundreds of years. Yeah, oh, probably thousands. Thousands. Right. Yeah. Right. But like, you know, and then, hey, Egypt, what's going on in the Sinai Peninsula? Give some of that to, to the Palestinians too, you know? Right. Make this thing continuous. And then you have the open area. And I think there's probably a lot of people that would see the logic in all this, but the vocal minority violent ones. Don't want any part of it. Well, and, and that's where the rest of the Arab community would have to come together and say, we're, we're pushing it. Hamas is no more. You're, you're no longer welcome in the community. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like white people with Nazis. Yeah. Nazis still exist. Yeah. In today's world. But 99% of white people are like, fuck those guys. Yeah. You're not welcome here. Like, you can run around, do your little marching, and then go back to where you came from and shut the hell up. Mm-hmm. It, it, you're you're not welcome in polite society. Yeah. Right. Well, maybe the Arab nation, the Arab nations need to be like, okay, Hamas, you know, you're going to come around, do your thing. You're not going to be violent. Yeah. You're not going to do anything stupid, but you can go and you have your. But they don't believe in much free speech out there anyway. No. But my thing is, you got to condemn that shit and let Israel have its peace, whatever's left of it. And so basically, so. Th did we just solve the Middle East, by the way? We did. So, Palestine now exists mm -hmm. with some decent land, yeah. not the shit parts. Jerusalem is now its own entity, run by a, a run by the running joke of a of a, a rabbi, a priest, and an imam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Israel now still has a a good good part some good parts of their country as well that's completely safe and not under attack or not even under the threat of attack. Yeah. And you've got all that beautiful coastline. Yes. So like Gaza Strip. There's coastline there. That, yeah. I mean make that part of the new state for Palestine. Give, give, hey, we're open some resorts. Right? And, and that's so that's Get Hamas and the terrorists out. Open some resorts and start getting that European green. So may, and maybe even as part of the deal Israel has to help build the resort towns. Yeah, in Gaza Strip. Yeah, you get you now, get all. I don't the know big... if that goes against the Muslim religion and stuff because I mean, you know there, there aren't that many resort towns around the Arab area. You, you got uh, what it's Doha and and uh, not Doha. Uh, what what is it? Dubai, mm -hmm. right? They got a whole bunch of skyscrapers and stuff. But look, whatever. Basically, what do they need? 
to get some yeah. tourism going. Yeah. To, so they can, they can get some change in their pocket well, and be that, thriving. Well, there's those resorts in Egypt. That uh, all the Russians go to. All right. I don't know anything about that, but sure. Oh, yeah. Well, so the reason I know about it is because there's a plane crash. And then there's a dude, some Russian guy was in the Mediterranean at one of those Egyptian resorts. Yeah. And they caught it on film of him getting attacked by a shark. Wait, we're, getting so, a fo- we're getting a phone call yeah. from, from Igor. <laughs> our buddy Igor, our Russian friend. Bro. Bro. <laughs> There's this dance club <laughs> in Egypt. Most beautiful girls I've ever seen. <laughs> beautiful. Lots of track suits. Wonderful music. Like, unt, 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 unt. Beautiful place. I make you great deal on a room. Wow, Igor, that, that's, a, that's an incredible report. We appreciate you calling in. Thanks, buddy. See, so, you know, Igor yeah. even says, look, they... It, you know, Arab nations have some resort towns. We didn't yeah. even know that. Let's do it right yeah. up there. You Boot, know, we got boots on the ground there. Who knows? Yep. Have buses or high speed rail connecting it to Israel, so people can go see the now peaceful holy city. Could you imagine if the Arab world had European style trains? Oh yeah, like high speed trains into into Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like you <laughs> sell it as <laughs> take a train and pray. Yeah. In only five hours. Yeah. <laughs> you know, come to the Wailing Wall. And then you get blasted at some resort town. <laughs> come to the Wailing Wall yeah. and get your booze free in Tel Aviv. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, imagine the, the sales pitches are numerous. You make it, a buddy of mine went there for work and he said that the beaches were awesome, the nightclubs were incredible, the women are absolutely stunning. So. No comment. Yeah. I, and I said, well, I won't be going there then. Right. I can't, you know. Yeah. Not only do I, would I not, I don't want to. Right. I have no desire to go see <laughs> any of the women of the Middle East. None. So. You know, I, I, I look, I, we make it sound so simplistic, right? Mostly because we don't have a dog in the fight. I do know that here in America, though, the amount of pro-Palestinian uh, rallies that are going on or pro Palestine, whatever you want to call them. Some of the things said at these rallies are really extreme. Mm-hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. There was a pro Israeli one in New York City that was ba- there were people there calling for, you know, wiping out all of Gaza. Yeah. I think, look, you got emotions that run high, right? You just had a huge festival that got killed. I mean, the biggest thing we have to compare it to is Las Vegas in the United States. When the guy, I yeah. forgot what I forgot what hotel he basically popped out a window of it's MGM just, Grand. I yeah, think. and he and he basically just started just mowing people down in Vegas. Yeah, that's essentially what kind of happened. Only they used paragliders instead of just a high window in the MGM Grand. Yeah, uh, and they got a lot more people. They killed a lot more people, but. Emotions run high when that stuff happens, especially mm-hmm. when you do talk about Israelis and, and Jewish people like, oh, not again. You know, it just keeps happening over and mm-hmm. over and over again. And you've got people in Gaza saying, hey, look, our living conditions suck ass. Yeah. You know, it's not. But Israel saying, look, it didn't have to be this way. If we weren't always under the threat of of this. Mm hmm. It could have been different. Yeah. And then you've got them saying, well, you shouldn't exist to begin with. Right. It, so, it, And then you just keep going in that cycle, the circle, the circle. It's over and over again. It, it's almost like someone has to rip the Band-Aid to come up with a solution, make sure that it succeeds. Mm-hmm. And then, you, but you, and you have to be able to do that for two generations so that the hate dies out. Yeah. Otherwise, like the hate's going to just live on. Mm-hmm. So... May, I, don't, I don't know. That's why this never get nothing ever gets done because nobody. Everyone's like, I don't know. Well, and I think the thing is like all those. What I find funny is all the people here at the universities and the students with their pro Hamas rallies. Like, first of all, you motherfuckers aren't going to do shit. <laughs> like, let's just like you couldn't pick up a rifle, let alone actually use one. So let's just drop the shit. Like, stop playing. Get, go go back. You know, all right, little boy, little girl, go home. You know, you've had your fun play time. Um, you know, that it's they're, they're always there. They're always there. And one of the reasons they're always there is because people put cameras on them. 
you know, and pay attention to them. There, well, nowadays, there's, there's always someone with a camera phone, <clears throat> you know, or a phone on the camera. No, a camera on the phone. That's why. There's always a camera on your phone. Yeah. And so when people see someone doing something stupid, it's like, I gotta, get, I gotta yeah. get this. Like, on a lot of these college campuses, <clears throat> I shouldn't even say a lot. On college campuses, you've got these kids going and pulling down the missing persons photos mm-hmm. from Israel. Now, why they're being posted on a college camp, you're not going to find them in New York City. Right. They didn't somehow make it all the way here. It So the posters themselves are political messages. Yeah. Saying, and it's against Palestinians by putting up the missing person. Like, like they somehow miraculously made it over here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, you know, this missing person who was at this music festival just happened to catch a flight and come to New York City. Maybe you find one that did, right? But chances are it's a political stunt that they're even up. Mm-hmm. Well, now you got this college kid pulling them down. Yeah. And now someone's videotaping them pulling it down. Mm-hmm. And that's the story where this little pissant college kid who doesn't know their elbow from their asshole is trying is, is do i'm going to save palestinians by ripping this sign yeah, down shut up and the other guy's going to save israel by changing his facebook picture to an israeli flag yeah and the virtue signaling there, there was a girl they i just saw it on the news she had some job offer from some high pay and the that she was out speaking out against israel and pro pals and the yeah. the company withdrew that so then they interviewed her I'm going to use my platform to 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 bring light to these atrocities and that end the military. I'm like, first of all, take the pieces of metal out of your fucking nose, and then <laughs> just little girl, just go home. Okay, why is anyone listening to you about anything? If you told me what the weather was, I would put my head out the window to make sure to verify it. Yeah, because like, but all of a sudden these people are given credibility. What have you done to earn any credibility mm-hmm. except run your stupid fucking mouth? Just because you're running your mouth doesn't mean people have to listen to you. And we have an entire generation that thinks that because they're speaking, their message needs to be heard. No, your message is dumb, and so are you. Um, but here we are listening, and here I am talking about her, but I mentioned her name. So You're talking about her because it's so stupid that people listen to her. Yeah. And uh, not hear her, but actually listen to her. Yeah. And, and give credence to what she's saying. I heard. Blah, 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 blah. That's what I, I heard. I heard. I heard a whiny child. Yeah. Whose parents never said no. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. Um, it, there, it, it, I think the incident you were talking about was there was a letter written at Harvard and it was 26 student union groups signed on to it. Mm-hmm. Well, one of the heads that signed their name, one of the heads of the group signed their name. She had her offer rescinded. Yeah. <clears throat> um, she immediately said oh i didn't know what i was signing we're removing our signature from this that's that's a real good way of saying i fucked around i found out yeah <laughs> and we, we've used that term a lot yeah. right now you know what, I'm but a, it's true yeah you you, you touched the stove and got burnt kid you found out what real life is mm-hmm. and the funny part was when people got when, when back in the covid days or even before when people got doxxed and they got fired from their job because people found out who the names were behind the Twitter handle, people were like, well, you know, freedom of speech doesn't mean freedom of consequences. Yeah. But now it's happening on that side. Yeah. And it's like, eh, well, freedom of speech isn't freedom yeah. of consequences. <laughs> and you just got your job pulled after you took out about 200 grand of debt to pay for college and a degree that nobody gave two shits about. Right. And that's a whole nother topic. But <laughs> now, Miss. 23 24 year old graduate student who doesn't have a job has no way to pay those student loans and oh by the way they're going to come do real fucking soon Mm -hmm. how do you feel about your opinion now maybe you should have kept it to yourself yeah because it wasn't that important was probably wrong and certainly uninformed and very right and very uninformed and you're going to find out real soon that the real world is nothing like harvard yeah with your professors that only believe one way. Yeah, and as long as you parrot what they regurgitate what they say, you're fine. Right. And safe spaces and all this other fucking nonsense that we've created for you little, you know, for you babies. But and there's another John Huntsman because UPenn had a bunch of students or signed on some nonsense. John Huntsman withdrew 
a $10 million endowment that he'd given them. Yeah, it's not just him. A lot of these yeah. IVs with a lot of these wealthy donors, a lot of the money is getting pulled. Yeah. And trust me when I say this, if you start pulling, if these big boys or and big ladies start pulling their donation money from Harvard, Penn, Yale, Princeton, oh, you, you better believe you're going to get silenced because mm-hmm. Harvard has a $40 billion endowment mm-hmm. invested that they are keen to grow mm-hmm. and not just with dividends and, 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 and they want more principal going in. That yeah, they, they, exactly. <laughs> they, that donation train ain't stopping. And certainly not for you, miss head of the ant loving cooperation group. <laughs> Sorry. You, you want to love Palestine? You go do that somewhere else. Yeah. Um, and next time read, by the way, she was going to be a lawyer who didn't read what she signed. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably why you got your offer rescinded. Yeah. Because you're a lawyer who didn't read shit. Because you're stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you read all those law books, but you didn't read something you put your name on. Uh, you could fuck that right that's now. That's like basic just life 101. Never mind life. It's basic lawyerdom. Yeah. You always read what you sign. Yeah. And that's probably why your job got pulled. <laughs> because you didn't read what you signed and yeah. you were going to go be a lawyer for someone else. Uh, they weren't going to let you put pen to paper. Yeah. Oh, don't read that. I mean, you're good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I trust it. It's good. It's yeah. good, man. It makes me feel good. Everyone else is doing it. Yeah. Mm, uh, I think you need to find a job somewhere else. <laughs> well, we appreciate you tuning in. Actually, unless you, you got something else for this? before I, I just kind of jumped the gun there. No, the only, the, the only thing I was going to mention up was, uh, well, I talk, we talked about briefly the tactics and stuff that they used and how that escaped all of the intelligence agencies and... Oh, you yeah. know, we didn't and, get into that. And all the people that were involved and in, you mean they didn't capture one dude who was like, Oh hey. But I can tell you this, like, you know, say they did capture that one dude, he's like, Hey, something big's coming. They're gonna use gliders and people are gonna parachute in and blah blah blah. Whoever's interviewing that guy's gonna be like, Yeah, okay. <laughs> and then next thing you know, like, Oh shit, that guy was right. Did they shoot any of them down? I don't think there's well, here's another interesting thing. Mm. After all, pretty much the Israeli government had disarmed their civilian population and is now rearming them really quick. Right. Because the other thing is, like, what would that happen here? And you know, every depending on where it happens. Yeah. If it happens in Texas, they're <laughs> shot down. Yeah. <laughs> with with, with AR fifteen. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If it happened in, you know, Bethesda, there's going to be. But I posted free Palestine. Pow. Right. right. Sorry. <laughs> you got to go. Yeah. <laughs> Um. Yeah, they, it, I don't know how they, this was uh what, WMDs in Iraq all over again. Yeah, intelligence agencies not so fucking intelligent. Yeah, but then there's a conspiracy theorist because BB Netanyahu was getting in some hot water and so, some of the stuff his wife was doing. Well, hey, let me let this happen. I need a distraction for a distraction, and it could be. And I'm not endorsing this theory one way or the other, but you know, let me. Maybe he didn't think it was going to be as big as it was. Right. Hey, this would be a nice distraction to take the heat off me. Then, oh, shit, that was really fucking big. Right. So. Right. It's like, hey, Hamas, I need you to paraglide in for a minute. Shoot some guns a little bit. Yeah. We'll pretend like we didn't see it. Yeah. Kill a couple people. Yeah. A couple, just a couple. Ugly two, ones. A couple. Not four. cool ones. Yeah. Not the, not the good looking ones. Right. Not the babies. Yeah. No, no babies. Yeah. And then they go and kill everyone, yeah. including the babies. Yeah. Um, like, and then BB's like, Ooh, Hey guys. Yeah. Could you, you know, next time maybe not go so hard. Right. And then, and then like, BB, we did what you asked. Yeah. Now you say do less. <laughs> We can't control when, when we're in the air with our paragliders. You know, we can't really control what we do from there. You you fucked around and, uh, as they say, uh, uh, found out. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Look at us with foreign correspondents, huh? I know. We can develop those, uh, get some more of them. Might be a news show later on. But we appreciate you listening. Please comment, like or unlike, subscribe, share. Uh, I'm sure lots of people have stuff to say on this probably afraid to say what they want to say on this uh but we're not even though we should be <laughs> um okay, uh thank you to cheers and spirits in the arnold station plaza thank you to brian Schilling. i hope we still have sponsors after the show and we will see you guys next time <laughs>